Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, hundreds return to work as Sandals hosts a grand reopening. Three men arrested during a $3 million drug bust along the Ragged Island chain. 43 new homes to be built as government breaks ground in Pine Crest subdivision. And the housing minister urges the FNM to move on from the Prospect Ridge development. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, following a nearly two month delay and more than $30 million in renovations, Sandals Royal Bahamian reopened its doors today for the first time since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. The reopening was marked by a midday ceremony attended by Bahamian and Jamaican officials. Jasmine Brown reports. The grand reopening means that hundreds of people are now back at work at Sandals and the Prime Minister also says it's good news for the tourism industry. The West Bay Street Resort reopened on the 41st birthday of Sandals Resorts International Executive Chairman Adam Stewart. Stewart says not only did they want to reopen the resort, they wanted it to be a reimagined property. And as we began thinking about reopening this resort in and amongst a series of all of our Caribbean resorts, we made a decision that the very first investment that we would make, major transformation after the losing of our founder, my father, and our chairman, would be to transform one of our most iconic investments in Sanders Royal Bahamian. We pivoted from what was and the history to what is all things beautiful and Bahamian. In addition to Prime Minister Davis, the grand reopening ceremony was also attended by members of Cabinet and Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Prime Minister Davis said the fact that this Sandals property is back on the market means the Bahamian economy is bouncing back despite an ongoing pandemic. The tourist economies of the Caribbean were hit especially hard during the COVID-19 pandemic. And today is a landmark moment. Another important signal that the Bahamas is open for business. Officials say the redeveloped property will employ 900 plus workers. The resort was due to reopen last November, but that was delayed for renovations. Stewart has said the renovations cost about $37 million and employed up to 500 construction workers at the height of the project. The renovations included the addition of new swim up suites and the refurbishment of more than 200 rooms and suites. Sandals Royal Bahamian General Manager Adrian Whitehead. We're all here today to celebrate a major milestone. It could not be more proud of the 900 plus team members we have working here uh, on resort and the work that they've done with our leadership team and the corporate offices to make today possible. While the Sandals property on New Providence reopened for the first time in nearly two years today, the property in Exuma has been open since February 2021. Stewart says that property continues to do phenomenally well. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A joint operation in the Ragged Island chain leading to the seizure of $3 million worth of marijuana on Wednesday. The suspects were spotted on a go-fast vessel. They arrived in New Providence where they're expected to face charges. Kale Campbell reports. Three Bahamian men were transported to the capital in handcuffs today after 55 crocus sacks and 55 brown packages of marijuana, valued at $3 million, were found on a go-fast boat vessel traveling along the Ragged Island chain. Police press liaison ASP Audley Peters says the major bust was the result of a joint operation between the Drug Enforcement Unit, OPBAT, the U.S. Coast Guard, DEA, Customs Border Protection, Air Marine Operation, and the Police Marine Support Unit. The suspect's vessel was spotted by the U.S. Coast Guard around 9 a.m. Wednesday during a routine air patrol in the southern Bahamas. The U.S. Coast Guard vectored in the Marine Support Unit and sometime around 5.30 p.m. The Marine Support Unit intercepted the suspected go-fast boat and boarded the vessel. A field search uh, was carried out and the officers found 55 white crocus sacks and 50, 53 white crocus sacks rather and 55 brown packages aboard the vessel. The suspects, aged 41, 52 and 63, were arrested and brought to the capital this afternoon. Officers formed a human chain to remove the packages from a police vessel and pile them onto the police marine dock. 
Peters said it is unclear what their final destination was. We're early in the investigations. We're not able to say whether the vessel was uh, on its way to another country. We had to act because it was in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And being so, we must do the best that we can to ensure that wherever they were heading, they didn't get there. This latest bust comes two days after $2 million worth of cocaine was recovered in Abaco. It is a trend at the moment, issue of supply and demand. However, the partners in this jurisdiction are working feverishly, doing using all our resources to intercept the persons, whether they be international, whether they be local. We're putting our best foot forward in relation to the, the, the issue of dangerous drugs within our communities. When asked about the fate of the drugs found, Peter stated that when the three suspects are brought to court for trial, if convicted, the drugs will be destroyed by fire. And once that is done, that is done under supervision. Reporting for Our News, I'm Cale Campbell. Well, the Davis administration breaking ground on the Pinecrest subdivision, which will provide 43 homes for Bahamians. Housing Minister Joe Beth Colby Davis says some homes will be valued at $182,000. She expects the first 10 homes to be completed by September. The homes are going to range between 167 and 182, and that's because we're adding. Um, partial landscaping in the front and we're fencing in the back for all of the homes so that we could give it a little bit more shazazz um, for persons coming in the area and um, becoming homeowners. The applicants have already been approved. The homes will be constructed by Arawak Homes, which will partner with Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute to provide training for some of its students in that sector. On Tuesday, the Ministry of Housing hosted an open house where more than 400 Bahamians submitted applications. Despite the brevity of my tenure thus far, I have embarked on an aggressive housing agenda and I am committed to ensuring that the staff of my ministry fosters positive customer service relationships that will enable Bahamians to realize their dreams of home ownership. The thrust of bodes well for generating and maintaining a palpable level of excitement in the communities where we intend to develop our housing subdivision. The housing minister was also asked about plans for a subdivision in Carmichael. Uh -huh. Yes, Carmichael will be getting some homes very shortly. What happened there is we have to make sure that we have our tie-in so that our water and sewage connections can be done. The tie-in has to be done through the infrastructure of Phase 2. So we're about to start Phase 2. Once we get Phase 2 started, we will begin construction on Phase 1. Meanwhile, Housing Minister Joe Beth Colby Davis hitting back at FNM leader Michael Pintard, who said the new administration is seeking to gain political points over the controversial Prospect Ridge development. The Elizabeth MP says the opposition needs to leave it alone. Berthony McDermott reports. Housing Minister Joe Beth Colby Davis dismissing the opposition's suggestion that official recommendations to abandon the Prospect Ridge project be tabled in Parliament. Colby Davis said the report was already tabled and suggested the FNM needs to let it go. I think the opposition needs to just leave it alone. Um, the DEPP report is the one I was speaking of when I spoke to the media earlier. I tabled that in my speech in the house and so if they want a copy of it they can just go back to the hands art and I spoke. Earlier this week the housing minister announced that the government is being advised to scrap the project. FNM leader Michael Pintard called for the report to be tabled while former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis vowed to do all he can to ensure the property remains for young Bahamians. The initiative which started under the former Minnis administration was halted when the Davis administration came to office. As Colby Davis said nothing was done to move the project forward. Speaking on the sidelines of the groundbreaking ceremony for the Pine Crest subdivision, the housing minister said her tech team only advised her of what made the most sense. My tech team is being a tech team. They're saying what makes sense right now, what could get people in their homes faster is going in the areas where we are ready to start construction. And that's all they said. It's not a report. It is just them advising their minister and their minister going to cabinet and asking cabinet to give me a final decision. The Elizabeth MP explained some of the cons in that report. That report spoke to the issues about the environmental concerns and the wetland and all sort of other documentations that they found was missing and why they didn't think it was ready to proceed. All my technical team did was to gave a summary of that 
other matters of concern as in costing and the price that will end up going back to the purchaser. And they said the demand is great and this is the bracket of persons and this is the amount and the value that they're qualifying for, which is below 210000 She also hit back at Pintard's assertion that the Davis administration is only looking to score political points. I'm building homes and for Bahamians. Amen. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Partly cloudy conditions expected tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, Christina. Welcome, everybody, for our first look at weather tonight, being sponsored by Ports International, trusted medical supplies for a better quality of life. After a very warm day around the islands, temperatures managed to get up into the low to mid-80s. We are settling down into the low 70s, 73 outside our studios right now. Under partly cloudy skies, those winds are light. We call it one mile power, if you want to call it that. Feels like temperature, very warm and muggy, 77 on the outdoors. Satellite view. That frontal boundary and low pressure system across the Northern Islands generating some pockets of showers and some thunderstorms mainly across the extreme Northern Islands. One or two of those affecting the North Andres area as well. But an area of low pressure to the north of that is actually stirring up the weather and that low is expected to pull out towards the north and pull a frontal boundary across us by the weekend. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, Miami Street residents gathered to pay tribute to a young mother murdered in the community and growing optimism over the region's economic rebound. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. A somber scene on Miami Street last night as family and friends came together during a candlelight vigil to remember 21-year-old Heavenly Tervais, who was shot and killed by her boyfriend on Saturday. Anglerson MP Glennis Hannah Martin attended the event. What is it that's happening in this country, this wonderful, beautiful country of ours that is seeing us degenerate in this way? And I think it's very, it's, it's very important that we recognize it and that we begin to go and see what, is, what are the root causes. And I think that's the way to address it. Like, you know, the police arrest and courts charge and then they convict and you go to prison or whatever. But I, I, I would like to know, what is it that's happening in this family of the Bahamian people? The young mother was shot and killed in the bedroom of her mother's home where family members discovered her body. Her fiancé, who also shot himself during the incident, later died in hospital. President of the Anglerston Neighborhood Watch Association, Monique Bethel, urged victims of domestic abuse to speak out and seek help. I'm just praying that government help get a safe house for young ladies. You know, I want to speak to the young ladies tonight. Young ladies, let me tell you something. You don't have to be abused by a man. I'm sure you have a friend. You don't, even if you don't want to go to your parents, you have a friend that you can confide in. Heavenly death should be an example to each and every one of us. In other news, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness expressing optimism the Caribbean will experience a strong rebound following the COVID-19 pandemic, which has significantly impacted the tourism industries of countries across the region. The last two years have been challenging to say the least, and no country has been spared. Economies with heavy reliance on tourism would have suffered immensely. Though we are seeing incredible signs of recovery, we have not yet fully recovered. And all stakeholders must exercise patience in the recovery process. Holness was addressing the reopening ceremony of the newly renovated Sandals Royal Bahamian Resort today. He says the world slow, as the world slowly emerges from the grips of the pandemic, the Caribbean will be among the regions that benefit most. 
as difficult as the last two years have been, I am optimistic, indeed very optimistic, of a stronger recovery. I believe that we are going to recover stronger and better than we were before the pandemic. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, polls close in local government elections, and a son of the soil makes a grand return. We have the details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID 19 there. remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID 19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. The polls have closed following a busy day on the family islands where thousands of residents voted in local government elections. Megan Shepard has the details. Minister with responsibility for local government elections, Clay Sweeting, on the island of Abaco to cast his vote. Minister Sweeting says he believes that residents may have a jaded view of local government elections, but he is seeking to change that. I think over the years, people have felt that local government is more or less um, just a body that rubber stamps everything and, and over time has lost their touch with the actual communities with the red tape and not being able to really structure and focus on and develop their communities and we hope to change that we hope to change that through legislation uh, providing local government councils with revenue raising powers that's properly regulated so that they could actually raise funds to properly um, develop their communities the minister also congratulated and commended all candidates on the islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama for offering themselves to serve post Hurricane Dorian we must um, compliment them on that and, and the candidates that's been nominated. So we anticipate um, a good turnout in, in both areas. I, I think Abaco and Grand Bahama seem to have a lot more campaigning um, and involvement going on during the process. So I'm sure that we'll see a large, larger turnout there. Over on Grand Bahama, Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, Iram Lewis, also casting his vote. He says he believes more emphasis should be placed on the outlying communities of the island. Grand Bahama consists of those communities that existed before Freeport. It's important that we pay attention to them. Once you have all of those outlying constituency, um, communities develop, we have more balance. And there's no, no one dependent on the city of Freeport. Because if you have balance on the entire island, if something happens to the city of Freeport, you have something to fall back on. Um, so again, it's important that we, de we develop and we balance those uh, existing com um, communities outside of the city of Freeport. These residents share what they hope to see from the next local government representatives. I just hope they could just beautify the area, you know, keep the children, the young men off the streets, do something for the community. The community is really run down in Louisiana, Hunter's Town. We need some kind of strong forces. They, and I they're promising to do something nice and make sure the youths them be safe. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Bahamian NFL star Michael Strawn making a triumphant return to home soil in Grand Bahama. Marcellus Hall has the details tonight in sports. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall here in Fort Myers. Again, we have a number of our softball players down here making a tournament, and we'll see how they do as much as they get competition underway tomorrow. Meanwhile, our NFL great.
NFL player Mike Strawn back home yesterday in Grand Bahama. Let's take a look and see how his reception went. You got to order about this. Grand Bahama native and Bahamian NFL football player Mike Strong arriving back home yesterday. Much too much fanfare as cheering family, friends, and fans on hand. Strong talking about his experience in his first year with the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, in the off season, I plan to you know go into deep training so I could come back you know even better, even a better receiver, so I could come back and help my team in the Super Bowl. Um, personal goals right now, just you know, working on myself, becoming a better player, becoming a better person, you know, off and on the field. On to some NBA news, where Buddy Hill and the Sacramento Kings took to the floor. They faced off against the Atlanta Hawks. Both teams at the bottom of their respective conferences. Turns out, Sacramento a little bit more at the bottom because they lose 121 to 104. Buddy, slow night at the office for him. He finishes up with eight points, eight rebounds, four assists in 30 minutes on the floor. Taking a look at his shooting, three of 12 from shooting from regular and one of eight from downtown. Continuing to struggle just a bit, as does his team. They are now well at the bottom of the Western Conference. Taking a look at their standings, they're 18 and 32, 13th in the West. They play the 76ers next. That's going to come your way on Saturday. It's indeed your look at sports here on this Thursday. I'm Marcel Hall. Back to you. Thanks, Marcellus. After the break, Greg is back with the weekend weather forecast. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. Temperatures expected to dip over the weekend. Greg is back with our extended forecast. Thanks again, Christine. Welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. Low pressure system to the north of the Bahamas, triggering some showers and some thunderstorms across the northwest Bahamas. That low pressure system will rapidly move towards the east and quickly deepen. Um, it's going to actually drag a very strong cold front across the northwest of Bahamas by Friday into Saturday, and that will usher in some very cold air mass across our area. So portions of the northwest Bahamas, you could see some very cold temperatures down into the 40s for your early morning sunday morning forecast temperatures and those temperatures could work its way down into the central bahamas as well behind that high pressure will build across us very windy conditions expected for the weekend so beaching and boating will become a challenge for you if you plan on doing any of those activities for the weekend speaking of boating your forecast for the northwest and central bahamas a caution flag will be posted tonight through tomorrow your winds will be out of the southeast to south tonight, but they will become southwest to west at 15, 10 to 15 knots tomorrow, pardon me. Sea is running two to four feet over the ocean. Your low tide will be at 9.17 tonight. For the southeast Bahamas, we expect those winds to remain out of the southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be running two to four feet over the ocean. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now to extended forecast through Thursday. Very windy and cool conditions expected for the weekend as that frontal boundary moves through. Make sure you be prepared. Back to Christina. Thanks, Greg, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Stay tuned for a brand new episode of On the Record with Jerome Sawyer. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.